So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we use D2 Biological Solution uh, to clean these veteran headstones. Subscribe to our channel here. We've got a lot of videos that will teach you how to do this if you'd like to get involved. Visit bymemorialday.com where we've got all the videos you need to get started. We also have a link to the protocol we had issued by the National Cemetery Administration in 2020 to help volunteers do this properly and also to designate these stones clearly as federal property. These are not private stones. Beneath this leaning, iconic white marble veteran headstone rests the member of the 1st Regiment South Carolina Volunteers, the first black men organized to fight in the Civil War. His name was Joseph Williams, a black man born a slave in St. Augustine, Florida, almost 200 years ago. We know he was a slave when he volunteered to join the Army because his muster roll states, not free. These are owned by the federal government, by we the taxpayers. So when you talk with your local cemetery to get permission to clean these headstones, make sure you give them a copy of that document so that they understand these are federal property stones. And it's okay to clean them. This is not right. This is not the way we honor veterans of our past. We just need to go to a National Cemetery, any National Cemetery, including Arlington, to see those stones in perfect condition. This is not right. Let's get this done. Let's clean the headstone of Joseph Williams, 33rd United States Colored Infantry Union soldier during the Civil War. He was born a slave in St. Augustine, Florida, somehow ended up in Beaufort, South Carolina during the Civil War. He was behind Union lines along the coast and he volunteered to put on that blue uniform. Now, if you know anything about the Civil War, if you're a black man and you put on that blue uniform and you're captured, you're to be executed or sold back into slavery. So if you're looking for courage in America, you're looking for a hero to rally around in America, this is him. He enlisted in Company D, of the 33rd United States Colored Infantry. He served for three years, and he's buried here in a place called Laurel Grove Cemetery South in Savannah, Georgia. Now there's a lot of people in Savannah, Georgia. This is a large city. It's a large port city. And I want you to ask yourself, why is it that not one person until today, not one person has come out here to clean this man's headstone? I want you to let that sink in because this is the way our headstones look all across America for our veteran heroes, and this is a special one. North and South had been fighting the Civil War for two full years when Abraham Lincoln issued his Emancipation Proclamation on January 1, 1863. In this sketch, the black men of the 1st Regiment South Carolina Volunteers celebrate receiving their regimental flags on Emancipation Day. Unbeknownst to many is the fact Lincoln's proclamation had no authority within the sovereign country of the Confederate States of America and specifically excluded the nearly 800,000 slaves held in bondage within the northern states of New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, Missouri, and around the city of New Orleans. Let there be no doubt, Joseph Williams and the other black Union soldiers were fighting to end slavery the moment they volunteered to serve at a cost up to and including their lives.
Evidence like this historical marker at Fort Pulaski National Monument remind us Lincoln's intent was not to end slavery when he called for 75,000 troops to invade the southern states on April 15, 1861. It was a full year later on April 13, 1862, when Major General David Hunter issued the first orders to free slaves at captured Fort Pulaski near Savannah. On May 9, 1862, General Hunter ordered the freedom of all slaves within the states of Georgia, Florida, and South Carolina. But those orders of freedom were overturned by none other than President Abraham Lincoln. February 9, 1866. Comrades, the hour is at hand when we must separate forever, and nothing can take from us the pride we feel when we look upon the history of the first South Carolina Volunteers, the first black regiment that ever bore arms in defense of freedom on the continent of America. On the ninth day of May, 1862, at which time there were nearly four millions of your race in bondage, sanctioned by the laws of the land and protected by our flag, on that day, in the face of the floods of prejudice that well nigh deluged every avenue to manhood and true liberty, you came forth to do battle for your country and kindred. It seems fitting to me that the last hours of our existence as a regiment should be passed amidst the unmarked graves of your comrades at Fort Wagner. Near you rest the bones of Colonel Robert Gould Shaw, buried by an enemy's hand in the same grave with his black soldiers who fell at his side, where in the future your children's children will come on pilgrimages to do homage to the ashes of those who fell in this glorious struggle. Lieutenant Colonel C.T. Trowbridge I hope you'll agree that this is a proper way to find an American hero's grave in any cemetery in America, not just national cemeteries. These veteran headstones are just as important in your local church cemetery, your local city cemetery, uh, or a private cemetery somewhere out in the middle of the woods. Go to buymemorialday.com, learn how to do this, register as a volunteer at veterangraves.com, like us on Facebook, and press the subscribe button here on YouTube. Thank you for watching. I'm Trey Zipperer. We're cleaning every veteran headstone in America by Memorial Day.